Okay, girls. Last chance. So I want to give everyone, I think it's already time to start our story time. Um, for those of you who haven't seen me before, my name is Sherry Mubasher, and I'll be reading three stories today. Um, these are the three that I'm starting. This is the first one that I'm starting off with. Um, it's in my mosque. <clears throat> Next one, it's going to be a law made us all different. And last one, the most powerful night. I hope everyone's Ramadan has been going well and we're almost near the end. I'm really excited. So this book is going to talk about the last part of Ramadan and it's a new one. I just read it a, a, a week ago or so. So we're going to start off with In My Mosque, written by M. O. Yuxel, illustrated by Hatem Ali. And I really like this book. It has so much color and brightness. <clears throat> Let's see if we can see really good. Okay. In my mosque, we are a rainbow of colors and speak in different accents. Assalamu alaikum. I greet my friends and newcomers too. Everyone is welcome here. Let me see. In my mosque, we line our shoes in rows like colorful beads before stepping inside. I wiggle my toes and sink into the silky soft carpet. In my mosque, we dressed in our best outfits before standing in front of the most high. My auntie gives me a hug and I know I'm loved. In my mosque, grandfathers nimbly thumb their thespies, chanting, subhanAllah. I snuggle up by my dad and listen to the soothing sound of their words mixed with the cooing pigeons outside. SubhanAllah. In my mosque, grandmothers read the lines of the Quran. Bismillah rahman rahim Butterflies flutter inside me as my friends and I race to see who can spread the most prayer mats and hand out the most tasbih. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In my mosque, the Imam tells us stories of living in harmony together as one. I understand we are all connected and come from the same creator. In my mosque, the muezzin's melody, melodious call to prayer echoes in the air. I stand shoulder to shoulder with my friends, linked like one long chain. In my mosque, Auntie Sajab sway like a sea of flowers as we move through our prayers. I try to pay attention, although sometimes I get distracted. In my mosque, we end our prayers by greeting the angels on our shoulders who watch over us day and night. My angels cheer me on as I whisper heartfelt wishes and hope they all come true. And then this one says, peace and blessings be upon you. In my mosque, we learn to help others whenever we can. A joy blooms inside me, inside me and drifts up like a balloon at the sky high pile of food donations we have collected. In my mosque, we eat naan, samsa, and sweet melon slices after prayers. We zigzag, sneak, peek, and play hide and seek in our secret playground. I hope it's never time to leave.
In my mosque, we hug and kiss each other goodbye. I look up at the high circular dome and the pointed archways and my mosque feels safe like home. In my mosque, we pray for peace, love and joy, just like my friends who worship in churches, temples and synagogues. You are welcome in my mosque. And that's the end. The next one is Allah Made Us All Different, Be Yourself by Rabia Gelgi. Once upon a time, there was a bird living in a beautiful forest, but little birdie was not really happy about what she was. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed this one. Her name was Little Birdie. One day, she saw a pretty kitten while she was flying. Little Birdie wished she was a cat too. She landed on the ground and tried to walk like a cat, but she only had two feet. That's okay, thought Birdie. I can use my wings instead. After a short while, her wings started to get sore and she wasn't able to follow the cat anymore. She started crying, thinking it was so difficult to be a cat. Little Birdie gave up on being a cat and started flying again. This time, she saw a gorgeous butterfly who was flying from flower to flower. I wonder if I look as beautiful as that butterfly if I dye my wings, she thought, and decided to paint her wings. She did change the color of her wings, but they didn't look pretty at all. Little Birdie was sad. Little Birdie gave up being a butterfly. Then she saw that there were a lot of fish swimming at sea so peacefully that she immediately wanted to be one of them. However, there was this one thing she forgot. She didn't know how to swim. She got out of breath when she dived into the sea. Oh, Allah, please help me, help me, she screamed. Alhamdulillah, she remembered that she could fly. She managed to save herself from the water. She was so scared. After getting some rest, she started flying again. Then she saw a very beautiful flower in a green meadow. The flower was just standing there. Little Birdie thought that it would be so easy to be a flower. She perched on a branch, spread her wings, and began to stand still as if she was a flower. Little Birdie got too hot under the sun and her wings got tired quickly. She finally gave up being a flower and lied down on the branch to get some rest. She headed back home just before sunset. Little Birdie saw an owl when she was trying to sleep. She perched on a branch right next to the owl and kept her eyes wide open looking around just like the owl. How hard it was to stay awake all night. Little Birdie felt exhausted. She fell asleep before the sunrise. She was still sleeping when her friends came at noon. When she woke up, her mom told her, Oh, sweetie, Allah created various animals, numerous creatures in this world and made us all different. What makes us unique is being ourselves and doing what we do best. Little Birdie agreed and said, trying to be someone else is very, very hard. Anyway, mom, her mom smiled and gave her a big 
feathery hug. The end. That one was a cute one. All right, last one. The Most Powerful Night, a Ramadan story. Written by Ndah Hassan, illustrated by Sumbal Qureshi. Layla sat by the window under her twinkling lights that she and her mom had hung up together at the start of Ramadan. Her mother cracked the window open and a cool breeze swept Layla's curls off her shoulders. It was a beautiful Ramadan night. Mama, look, Layla exclaimed. The moon is almost a crescent again. Oh, I see that, Layla, said her mom. You know, Layla, this means that we are in the last few days of Ramadan. Layla was upset when she heard this. I don't want Ramadan to be over. Mama, I'm going to miss it so much. Oh my Layla, indeed, Ramadan is the most wonderful time of the year. Each year, it brings so many blessings upon us and all Muslims celebrating around the world. These last few days though, are the best days of Ramadan. Really, Mama? Why are they the best days of Ramadan? asked Layla. These last few nights of Ramadan are extra special because there is one night, just one night, during the last 10 nights when something magnificent and wondrous happens. Layla's jaw dropped. Really, Mama? What happens? Why is it magnificent? When is it? Tell me more, Mama. Well, Layla, I think it's time that I tell you about Layat al Qadr, the night of power and miracles. Layla propped herself up on her knees to listen to her mother's story. Once a year, there comes a night a night far more beautiful than any other night, a night of power, wonder, and many blessings, a night Muslims near and far across oceans and atop mountains eagerly await each year. This night, my dear Layla, is Laylat uh, al-Qadr, the most powerful night. Once a year, there comes a night on this night, the skies are filled with sparkles and shimmers. On this night, thousands of angels come down from the heavens and fill every corner of the earth. The angels come searching for those reading and reciting the Holy Quran. On this night, there is not a single speck of space to spare between the earth and the heavens, but that an angel fills it. Their wings will hold you and protect you. Their prayers will guide you. This night, my dear Layla, is Laylat al-Qadr the most powerful night. Once a year, there comes a night, a night better than a thousand months. On this night, the reward for all the good that you do is multiply, not once, not twice, but 70 times. This night, my dear Layla, is Laylat al-Qadr, the most powerful night. Once a year, there comes a night. On this night, many years ago, the greatest book was revealed, the Holy Quran. Angel Jibreel, the leader of all the angels, was assigned the task of teaching the Quran to Prophet Muhammad. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. For 23 years, each Ramadan, Angel Jibreel would come down from the heavens to earth to visit the Prophet and review Allah's divine words with him. On this beautiful night of Al-Qadr, Allah sent, sent us an everlasting gift from heaven to read and to reread to remind us he is always there for us. The words in the Quran have not changed since the time they were first revealed. Allah has protected them. And that is why each word we read or recite 
has lots of power to protect us and do us good. This night, my dear Layla, is Layla al Qadr, the most powerful night. Mama, can you help me say it? asked Layla. Layla wanted to make sure she remembered the words to describe this night so she could tell her friends all about it. Of course, my love, let me say it slowly for you. Lay lat al qadr. Lay lat al qadr. Lay means night in Arabic, like your own name, sweetheart. Al qadr means divine power. When you say it together, it is the night of divine power. Lay lat al qadr. Layla slowly repeated it after her mom uh, uh, until she said it just right. Mama, which one of these last 10 nights is going to be Layla Tal Qadr? I want to stay up to pray more and read Quran so that the angels come to visit me. Well, you see, Layla, we do not know the exact night Layla Tal Qadr will be out of the last 10 nights in Ramadan, explained Mama. Layla was a little confused. How do I know which night to stay up to read more Quran then, Mama? I don't want the angels to miss our home when they come down to earth, Layla worried. Layla's mom explained, since we don't know the exact night, we try our best to spend each one of these last 10 nights reading more Quran, giving more charity and praying more. Wait, does that mean I get to stay up late all of the last 10 nights of Ramadan? Smiled Layla, excited at the thought that she could stay up past her bedtime, Layla's mom laughed. Well, I guess we can make an exception for these last 10 nights and let you stay up just a bit, smiled Layla's mom. Woohoo! exclaimed Layla. Now, let's pick up the Quran and read Surah Al-Qadr together. We can also make a few extra special prayers before going to bed. Mama, are the angels going to visit us tonight? asked Layla. They sure will, my sweet Layla. They sure will, inshallah. That's the end. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the three little stories. I hope everyone has a good rest of their Ramadan. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum. And if I don't get to see you before then, Eid Mubarak to you guys here in a little bit. Salam.